Have you ever tuned into the radio, found this ad of insurance and wondered, yaar, ye hota kya hai? what is this all about? What is insurance? What should I be thinking when I'm buying it? Why do I even need it? Why do I think 10 years in advance when I can live in the now? Decoding the future on this episode of Karishma Connect with me is Neeraj Gupta, the CEO of PolicyBazaar.ae. He tells me about why it's important to take a different approach to this dynamic. Think a little differently. What do you need to keep in mind when you're considering an insurance in India and Dubai? He talks about these different markets. He talks about Policy Bazaar, of course, and the way they educate you to find a better insurance policy to get that journey sorted for you in no time, which absolutely looks intimidating otherwise. More than all of that, he's this amazing professional who is so good at what he does that you can see the passion stream through every bit that he talks about and learn from him as somebody who has made it to the top in no time. Go check it out and until the next one, I'll see you soon. I'm telling you, it's only getting one level up with every guest from here. Thanks to all those who have shared their stories and all those who are yet to share. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, I'll see you soon. This is Karishma Connect. We are back every Sunday and Thursday. So stay tuned and keep scrolling. Neeraj for joining me on Karishma Connect today. It's a pleasure to have you and I can't wait to un unravel the journey of Policy Bazaar in the UAE. I have often, uh, I think my first uh, interaction with it has been over all the advertising platforms and wherever I've come across the brand and I'm more uh, keen on, you know, getting to know the story behind it. So thank you for sharing that with me on this podcast in advance. Thank you, Karishma, for having me here. It's a privilege and a pleasure to be here. Most welcome. The first question I ask anybody is, how did you start? Where did you start? And you know, how are you where you are today? What's so special about it? And what was the need factor to start something like that back in 2008, where very few people even could have imagined? So, okay. So when our founders, uh, Yashish, Alok, Avnish, and the team, was looking at starting this up, right? So a couple of things were becoming very obvious. One, there was too much asymmetrical information available uh, uh, in India from an insurance perspective. At the same time, we had a growing middle-class population, uh, which was not protected by any of the government schemes, right? So you typically have to uh, protect yourself on your own. Uh, and they had seen in the international markets how the protection stories will play around, right? Uh, middle income group growing, they have uh, huge aspirations uh, to access better services, better quality of uh, facilities, right? Mm -hmm. And as a result, we, uh, they realize that insurance can play a pretty important role in securing that aspect, right? Yeah. Plus, what we also realized is uh, typically, if you look at the insurance landscape of 2008, yeah. a majority the insurance which was getting sold in form of insurance was morely on the saving side. It was more on the investment side yes. rather than health health insurance, which is a protection play yeah. or a term. Right? right. And what we have we believed in is the three aspects, which is the death, disability, and disease. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, uh, you can replace that with protection, which mm -hmm. is a very key sense for any individual to have mm -hmm. to protect himself from or his family from any eventual. Mm. And I believe those were the important factors which mm. led to establishing Policy Bazaar in 2008. And what do you think uh, makes these factors so important? I'm going on an emotional front, but what do you think makes these factors more important for the consumer? And how has that also evolved over time? How has the meaning of that evolved over time, according to you? So if you look at a typical consumer right so okay let me put it this way so what we are addressing typically is a consumer who probably as a family income makes more than four five lakh rupees and yes. right yes. that is the audience and catering group right yeah. so let's i will so all my conversation i'll be addressing the consumer who is at that or above that level right yeah. so what starts to happen as a consumer uh psychology right when mm -hmm. you start earning four five lakh rupees which means you have uh enough to make your basic needs of food and shelter taken care of, right? Yeah. You become above that poverty or a basic poor uh, line, you're above that, right? Now, mm -hmm. at that level, the biggest fear that you have is falling below that, right? Mm -hmm. What essentially 
is at that level you want to send your kids to a private school mm-hmm. uh you want to probably use private health care mm-hmm. uh you want to move away from a public transport start to use a private transport mm-hmm. uh, move from two wheeler to a four wheeler mm-hmm. so those aspirations and those dreams starts to come about right mm-hmm. and the biggest fear you have is falling off the curve and going back yeah no that is where what we've been trying to do and still continue to do is educate the consumer that how does an insurance come into play mm-hmm. because tomorrow at that level see at a person who's earning probably 4 5 lakh rupees mm-hmm. he's probably at best saving uh, 50000 rupees annually probably yeah yeah is way or probably lower than that right probably mm-hmm. lower than that mm-hmm. uh what essentially means if today you have a serious health condition and you have to be hospitalized for probably a week yeah. or two weeks yeah. uh, you're not going to be able to afford it yes right uh, leave alone leave alone the tier 1 hospitals i'm talking even about a tier 2 or a tier 3 hospital right. you're not going to be able to afford it right yeah. having said that at the same time if this consumer also is not earning hmm. because at that level what might happen is if you are off work for 30 days you are probably not going to get salary mm. Mm. Uh, suddenly your income stops mm. and your expenses increase mm. because of the condition you're in mm. and you don't have a huge savings because you are at that level where probably savings are not huge yeah. so what do you do yeah. so the only way you can protect yourself and your family is by insurance right and what we've also seen and you would have also seen numerous cases where a family goes back generations if something untoward was to happen if the main earner probably loses his life or is bedridden or is having a severe condition right they can go back generations right yeah. the other aspect if you look at from an india perspective is also see earlier mm. we used to say in a, a sort of a joint family system Mm-hmm. any kid was taken care by the family not just the parents probably the uncle aunt everybody right mm-hmm. similarly if one of the brothers probably was sick or probably died mm-hmm. then the other brother or the family members would step in and mm-hmm. would treat that family as part of that and the uh, things would continue right mm-hmm. but now what has happened is you moved away from a joint family to a nuclear family yeah There's no support system around that. Yes, yes, right. Uh, it's okay. Uncle, aunts are there, but then everybody has his own life and own uh, things to take care of, right? So what essentially means is, I'm in a nuclear family. Me, my wife, and kids and parents, I have to take care, or we have to take care, right? So then these things become more uh, important. Yeah. And if you look at the policy with our journey over the years. we've been trying to educate the consumer about this and we continue to do so mm-hmm. uh, probably it's a very serious and we somehow try to get the message across in some sort of a lighter manner but that's the objective right that's the objective and how did how have you seen that change because it's two different regions we are talking about right we are talking about india and then we are talking about the uae where this is completely different the needs are different so how do you see that connection what's the scenario in the uae market then with the marketplace like that so so in uae what we've seen is uh, so in uae let me talk about uh, from a term life perspective from a life perspective and a health perspective separately see life perspective this country is a uh, needs a lot more education on the life side right uh, mm-hmm. so when we started term life did not exist in india we educated the consumer got that change happen or i would say we were instrumental in bringing that change right i believe the story in uae started on that a lot more education is needed because mm-hmm. two aspects a consumer who typically as an expat reaches this region mm-hmm. his mindset is i am here for 5 years make money and go back to my home country but does that seldom that happens does that ever but exactly and that doesn't happen and the other aspect is most of the people who leave this country after 5 10 years the amount of savings they have thought they will have they don't have that yeah because this country uh helps you in spending all <laughs> 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 that or has a lot of avenues for you to spend right yeah. but what we are seeing is a shift on that because now what we are seeing is the consumers are especially post covid the reality has sunk in right because in covid you saw not only from a 
perspective of medical reasons, but mm-hmm. also from an economy perspective that your job wasn't there. So you need to protect yourself. And if you didn't have a job and then you died, then there becomes a more problem or you don't have a job and you don't have an insurance also and you're hospitalized, then what happens? Mm-hmm. So I think consumers have started becoming more aware of that. On the life side, a lot more education is needed, which we continue to do so. On the health side, we are seeing a good uptake on the individual health. See how the health market is differentiated from the India perspective. Here, at least the employee uh, is insured through the employer. Yeah. So whomsoever provides your visa, that company has to provide your health insurance. So at least on an individual health level, that is not the priority for a consumer. Yeah, yeah. What we're seeing now is a lot of people considering that because they're also considering possibilities. Okay, tomorrow I leave my job and if I have a break in between, mm-hmm. or I want to start afresh and become a consultant, open my own shop, then what happens? So we're seeing a good uptake on the individual health. Term life is in the right direction. More education though is needed. And how are you doing that education as a marketplace? How are you? in terms of your services how are you just for the audience who wouldn't know about the different avenues to explore so what we're doing is at least on the term side see in this country you have two three segments of consumer one consumer who's here as the bread earner earning here but mm-hmm. his family uh, immediate family probably wife and kids are back in india right mm-hmm. so he's essentially earning here sending money back home so mm-hmm. we're trying to obviously educate the consumer keep you build a lifestyle basis the income you have here, right? And mm-hmm. your family is being supported by that. And mm-hmm. typically as a human being, what you plan is you plan, ki, okay, till 60, I'll earn, I'll build a portfolio. But what happens to you tomorrow? So mm-hmm. we address this consumer in that manner. Keep your family is out there in India or in your home country, wherever it is, mm-hmm. you're earning here. But if tomorrow that stops, what happens, right? The other aspect is a lot of consumers have believed that, okay, I am here for 5-10 years. Mm-hmm. I rather buy an insurance in my home country rather than being here because I'm going to leave. Yeah. So that what we always tell the consumer is see you building your lifestyle versus your income in AED or USD, mm-hmm. which means essentially you need an income protection for mm-hmm. this currency. Mm-hmm. Uh, so And we use various mediums, typically digital, social uh, mm-hmm. mediums, to reach out to consumers, speak to them, mm-hmm. and uh, create more awareness programs, more podcasts like this, and uh, speak to consumers typically on the product category. See, our objective right now is to popularize term life. You might buy from wherever, obviously, that's okay. But as a concept, because we genuinely feel at a middle class level, these are very essential products to have a sustenance for your family. Yeah. Yeah, very true. And then how do you keep up with the because there was a time when you started in 2008, where there were very few. But now there's a plethora of, uh, you know, for, if I have to mention insurance marketplaces, or even marketplaces as such, and they are all advancing at record speed. So how do you in that kind of a market, keep up with competition, keep up with everything that's happening? Yep, I, I believe the Best way is keep on listening to your consumers yeah. and keep on building products and processes around that. Mm-hmm. See, one thing that we've conscien- consistently done and consciously done is uh, we've kept the consumer at the center of everything, mm-hmm. but also not only from an acquiring perspective. Mm-hmm. What we've tried to do is insurance when you talk to a layman. Mm-hmm. Uh, the moment you talk about insurance, uh, the uh, top things he's going to associate with is uh, they're not going to give claims or yeah. they're going to take your money. Yeah. So the connotation associated with insurance industry for a layman has been negative, right? Yeah, I do. And that has been because of probably the post-sales experience mm-hmm. on the service level, on the claims level, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and what we are constantly working on is improving those experiences. What we are saying is consumer, yes, you come to a platform, you buy, but uh, our role does not end there. Mm. We're going to help you at the time of claim. We're going to help you at, at any servicing that you need with the uh, with the policy, right? We're going to stand with you. We're going to be there. We're going to handhold you throughout the process. Mm. Mm. And that is where we are consistently, consistently working on. And I believe if we continue to do that, 
I believe everything else will take care of it, right? You have to be there for the consumer with the right product and help him when he needs it. Because at the end, you're eventually selling a promise. Yeah. Uh, there is very, no physical very good. It's, it, it's a paper, right? And at the moment of truth, can you stand with the consumer if everything is right, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we've taken a conscious call on that. Wherever the consumer is, we stand with him and we will do whatever uh, we can to help him out, right? Uh, mm -hmm. that, that I believe that will continue to stand very good for us uh, mm -hmm. if we stick to and we will continue to innovate basis that. And what are, what would be the three, because for the younger audience who is not even aware of this, uh, it's, I mean, the perception for them is pretty much built with what their parents thought about an insurance policy, which often, in my experience, of course, in my limited circle, I can say is often driven by the opinion that you just mentioned that I would have to, you know, I will struggle with claims or I would have issues later. What do you have to say to that audience? What are the three things that when making a decision for themselves in the future, how can they change that by keeping in mind a few essentials that they should look out for? See, couple of things is uh, insurance, and, and and this is also at the industry level, right? As an insurer, as a distributor, we also need to do is uh, make them understand insurance is not an expense. Mm. Uh, like you treat, since the moment you buy, probably you will spend money on buying a watch or an iPhone or a dress or a movie, right? Mm. You consider it as probably a casual spend or whatever that you need it to mm. feel good about it. Mm -hmm. I believe insurance somehow needs to come in as not just, okay, this is a cost for me. No, this is more of a protection. I believe uh, that is jointly we need to work with the audiences to do that. But that is how they also need to start looking at it. Yeah. Because the insurance is going to come probably for those 5-10% who's going to make a claim. And when it comes into play, then it really helps you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the other aspect is obviously understanding what you really are building out on from mm -hmm. a perspective of what are your liabilities you think you are, what are your responsibilities are. See, I also understand that at 20, 25 year old or when you just finish your education and you start work, this is least of your things, right? I'm you just think gonna about come it. to that, yeah. Exactly. What are you going to think about? Okay, can I buy the latest phone or could I go to holiday to this destination or could I just buy this stuff for myself or for my parents? Or could I buy this car, right? So we obviously understand that. What we as an industry are probably trying to do is make insurance discussions, processes a lot more easier mm. uh, for this audience. Because what we've also realized is this audience wants to do a lot of stuff on their own. They want to research on their own. They probably don't want to speak to somebody. And we're trying to make that happen uh, by making things more digital, by making things more accessible, right? Uh, but that's about it. Uh, I believe there's a long journey for us also. How do we get these consumers to start thinking about insurance? But if I go back at 20, 25 year old, when I was, would I think about insurance? Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that would be a too wishful thinking for me. Even exactly. due course of time at 25 year old, I expect a person to start buying insurance, right? Yeah. But there are certain elements uh, which probably or certain incidents in your life which starts to trigger those perspectives. Mm -hmm. And at least what we've seen from a COVID perspective, uh, people have become more aware of it. Mm -hmm. uh, this one incident had made people more aware about ki, yes, uh, protection is important. Mm -hmm. For example, pre-COVID, typically people would say you should have rainy day savings for probably three, four months of your salary, right? Mm -hmm. That uh, concept changed to having probably a 12 months Yes. Of uh, money savings, right? And we've seen the younger generation be more on that. Mm -hmm. And what we've also seen is they want to be very asset light. They're mm -hmm. not thinking of buying a house today. They're not, and they're like, okay, why do I need to buy a house, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, one thing what we've seen is there is a shift. Yes. They're more uh, uh, probably clear on their finances as we were probably at 20, 25 year old. Uh, mm -hmm. We would have an earning and just spend or not be aware of where we are spending. Mm -hmm. But I believe today's generation is becoming a lot more aware. Mm -hmm. uh, they pretty much know what they want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so I believe we are headed in the right direction. And as an industry, obviously our role continues to make that uh, decision making, make that accessible a lot more.
That's lovely. And then another question for you, and this is very personal to your journey, uh, be it with Policy Bazaar or even before. What made you trust the brand at a time when it, it, I'm sure there would have been challenges and opportunities at a time when nobody really had this kind of a concept in the market. What made you as an individual trust? And I want you to go back to that time and also tell me what did, what was your mantra to kind of seeing that, okay, this is a place I believe I would grow so much in and for the younger audience who's watching this and trying to understand how do they evolve to the level that you're probably already at today so what do you think has helped you come here so fair enough i still remember my conversation when i joined policy bazaar before i joined policy bazaar with the founder yashish yeah. uh, very interesting conversation we had about five ten minutes of conversation at i was based out of bangalore yeah. and obviously that was headquartered in Gurgaon. I got my schooling done in Delhi and yeah. they called, and you call it a Delhiite kid, right? So I was probably that, a Delhi kid. <laughs> and the conversation was what I've been doing and do you want to obviously move back to Delhi? I'm like, yes, I've been uh, uh, wanting to do that. Said, okay, let, let, you just come in and let's speak and let's do stuff. Huh. Fair enough. I was like, okay, this is moving too fast, but I told him, okay, let me come down and meet you. So when I met the team, so I met uh, Yashish and Alok, uh -huh. uh, I genuinely liked the team uh -huh. and what their vision was about insurance, right? Uh, uh, obviously, at the interview level, you probably see and see only the good parts uh -huh. and probably you can say, okay, okay, you want to present the best picture ahead, right? Uh -huh. uh, but I'll tell you my journey, at least in the initial few weeks and months, what I realized is they were seriously focused on solving the problems of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and I tell you that within the few weeks, what I realized is any consumer complaint which came in mm -hmm. used to come to all people at the management level. And I'll tell you honestly, at that point of time, until very lately, mm -hmm. any consumer complaint, you would got a human response mm -hmm. between 15 to 20 minutes. Somebody mm -hmm. might be responding at two and nobody is obligated to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But that is where I saw the consumer focus. Mm -hmm. uh, and it comes from top down, right? In an organization Absolutely. when we saw and uh, the entire culture, we were made responsible for things. It was not that uh, I had just joined uh, from a company or oh, you too young to handle stuff. But we were given responsibility and we were given ownership of things. And we were allowed to fail, mm -hmm. right? The biggest learning that I have working uh, uh, with uh, Yashish and Alok is it's okay to fail. And mm -hmm. at times, if you're not failing enough, that means you're not trying enough. Uh, but at the same time, uh, be very conscious about what mistakes you're doing, learn from it and move ahead, right? And I believe the whole culture uh, as a team, as a company that we've been able to build where everybody is part of the journey mm -hmm. and we genuinely are trying to solve a social problem by ensuring people. Uh, I believe those are the aspects which really uh, helped me with the organization and in general keeps me motivated every day to do this. Yeah. I think that's what defines a startup that, that that's going to go a long way. Their, their focus on that very aspect that you just mentioned, I think, and the ability to kind of... Uh, be confident about what they're doing and put effort into it. And this was in which year, if I may ask? Yeah, I joined the company in 2011. And I believe at that time, fintech, startup. See, my, my point is your objective of joining a company needs to be very different from what we are seeing today, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of today's uh, decisions are probably on, okay, how much e-shops am I going to get? Mm -hmm. uh, how much I'm going to make. Mm -hmm. I believe at that time, probably because those things weren't there. Yeah. So those never came to our mind while joining the company, right? Yeah. yeah right. It was more about, at least for me personally, I, I was working with an IT company uh, and I was doing the same work which I was doing pre my MBA post, my engineering. I was doing similar work uh -huh. uh, and I wanted to do exciting stuff. And what I realized at that point of time, like uh, fortunately, because mm -hmm. I didn't have any liabilities or any loans because my parents took care of my education. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And at that time, probably the education wasn't so expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what that gave me a freedom to probably uh, decide on is what type of work I want to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, what ex- what excites me as a work? Uh, what motivates me to work? I believe that was for, very important for me than the financial aspects. Mm-hmm. And probably that has stood well for us. And till today, I believe that is what I still value more. Uh, uh, because what I genuinely believe is you're able to work, money will follow at some point of time. It's just going to say that, that I think your passion is what leads you to, you know, eventually you don't need to prioritize that first if you prioritize your fast passion i think you're going a long way there absolutely absolutely and then i'll wrap it up with one question that i love asking which is because people have such innovative answers to this which is if you were to explain insurance and break it down for a five-year-old how would you do it ah interesting one yeah okay i have to think about it oh 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 <laughs> it is almost like a piggy bank. Yeah. Uh, uh, for a five-year-old, that is how I'll explain. Yeah. Uh, you put in certain money in the piggy bank to buy something, right? Yeah. That is what insurance is probably for you. Insurance, you put in certain money, but it is not for you to buy something, but probably to protect you from something was to happen. Right? Yeah. That is how I would typically. <laughs> it's lovely. And uh, then choose the piggy bank that's most attractive and then head to Policy Bazaar, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'll be very honest. I tell today when I speak to my family, friends, I tell them and explain about insurance. And my objective has always been to tell them about insurance as a product. Yeah. And I tell them, please feel free to buy from anywhere else. Yeah. If you don't don't consider you have to buy from Policy Bazaar, I know I am a policy bazaar employee. I should not be saying that. But my genuine objective is for people to buy health insurance, mm-hmm. buy term life insurance. Because especially being in the insurance industry, we've seen more closely mm-hmm. what it can do. Yeah, yeah. Right. And it doesn't cost much. Genuinely, it doesn't cost much in the whole scheme of things. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I would leave at that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Neeraj. It's been a pleasure. It's been a, it's been an amazing chat. But I've also got so much to learn from your journey itself. So thank you for sharing it with me. No, my pleasure. Thank you, Karishma. It was a pleasure speaking with you.